Over 600,000 people go missing in the United States each year. Tens of thousands remain mysteriously missing. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mysteriously Missing. I'm Justine. Welcome back. I'm Karen. This episode takes place in the Grand Canyon National Park, located in the northern portion of Arizona. We are going to be talking about Floyd E. Roberts III, and he has been missing since June 17th of 2016. Floyd was on the first day of a nine-day backpacking trip with his best friend Ned and Ned's daughter Madeline. They were hiking in a remote part of the canyon when he disappeared. And Floyd has a 12-year-old daughter, and his best friend is Ned Bryant, and they had planned a backpacking trip together. The two friends met when they were about 10 years old in Princeton, New Jersey. They remained friends throughout the years, and Floyd was the best man at Ned's wedding when he had married his bride, Heidi. Then Floyd moved to Huntsville, Alabama to work for NASA, then later moved to Florida to teach at Middleton High School. Now, Middleton High School is in the Bay Area in Tampa, which is about 33 miles or about a 50-minute commute to work. He teaches business tech, computer programming, and game and web design and has been with the district since August 2014 or for two years at the time of his disappearance. So Floyd's a pretty intelligent man. He seemed to have a very good life, had a 12-year-old daughter, and, you know, you have to be awfully intelligent to work for NASA. Oh, definitely. And there's not any mention of a wife that we know of, but... The family members weren't vocal on... In this news, in the news reports for Floyd, Ned certainly was because he was with him when he went missing. Right. And then a neighbor, we'll hear from later, came in to speak about Floyd. So when Ned first saw the Grand Canyon, he fell in love. He told his best friend, Floyd, they were going to hike it together. And in 1992, they started hiking the canyon, and they kept taking trips. Sometimes Ned would go without Floyd, but for two decades, Floyd has been his regular hiking buddy. So they decided to take another adventure together, this time with Ned's daughter, Madeline. The three of them had gone on a similar hike in 2011. They scaled rocks and had a great time with no problems. Ned and Madeline are board members of the Grand Canyon Hikers and Backpackers Association, so they were very knowledgeable, are very knowledgeable about backpacking in the area. Ned, for this trip, came out from Minnesota, Madeline out from Arizona, and Floyd flew out from Florida for the adventure. The portion of the Grand Canyon that they were planning on hiking is north along the Colorado River. It is rugged and covered in thick foliage. The three set out together on their first leg of the journey that Friday, June 17, 2016. They planned to spend the first couple of days camped alongside the river. That's a pretty big adventure, going nine days backpacking in that kind of dusty canyon-like country. Mm -hmm. It's rugged. You know, you have to carry a lot of supplies, and I can imagine the weight on their backpacks to make sure you had enough food for nine days. Yeah, I was just thinking food for nine for three people for nine days. Yeah, you might they might be you know lugging around fifty pounds each, thirty five to fifty, you yeah. know, thirty five at a minimum. No, it's nice though. They were by the running river. Yeah, so they'll use their water filters to get right. the river, and you know, at times you're they're probably not by the river, but they were hiking along the river in and plan to camp there for a couple of days. So yeah. they must have been in good shape. Yeah. Now they left the road and before they reached the trailhead, Ned, Madeline, and Floyd reached a hill. They decided to take different routes and Ned and his daughter went up and over and Floyd had contoured or scaled around the hill. It was 4.45 in the afternoon. When Ned and Madeline reached the other side of the hill, they waited for Floyd. He didn't show up and they got anxious and started looking for him. They retraced their steps. They went all the way back to the road. They decided to make camp. They decided to make camp thinking he would show up. So I guess they probably... Yeah, they're thinking, you know, he took a little detour. Mm-hmm. He's going to show. I mean, for gosh sakes, he was just going around. Now, what did this yeah. hill look like? How long was it? We don't know. But, you know, they were assuming he's a smart guy. And that does happen when you're backpacking. You know, you guys want to go up and over. I'll go around. Yeah. Here's the trail map. We'll just meet right here and right. set up camp. And it was late in the afternoon, time to kind of get together afterwards. Yeah, almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon. 
afternoon. Yeah, so it it didn't it seemed like it wouldn't have been that big a detour. Mm-hmm. Now they even laid their colorful sleeping bags over trees to make camp easier to spot while it remained light out. But by morning, there was still no Floyd. <laughs> so very strange. Yeah, that he I mean, disappeared in that short amount of time. Day one. You, I mean, you have to think. I, like you said, we don't know how big this hill was, but even if you. Even if you were Floyd and you, you know, you made it around the mountain, where's your friends at? Wouldn't you retrace your steps to yeah. try and look for them? And you probably don't have cell service, but you also, he's a very smart man. If you got into a little trouble, you just sit still. Yeah. Now, some people can get out there and panic. Mm-hmm. They take a wrong turn and he might have done that. And then he's, you know, a little embarrassed or something. And so he keeps trying to find the spot and kind of wandered off further than he should have. But but he seemed, you know, like an experienced hiker. I mean... Yeah, I, he'd, done the, he'd done the, the canyon before. Now, yeah. you know, it's millions of acres, so he, I, he may not have done this portion. And things can look very similar in the same area, you know, in, in different areas because of the terrain. Right, Yeah. They were on the Shiv Wits Plateau, and they were backpacking in kind of a U-shape area, and the U-shape being the Colorado River. And Floyd was supposed to be hiking south toward Trail Canyon from an area called Kelly Tanks, where they he got lost, where he was last seen. So eventually, he would have run into the Colorado River. Right. And Separation Canyon was where their nine-day backpacking trip would have ended, and that's also inside this U on, on the west side of the U. In Separation Canyon sits on the Colorado River. Ned and his daughter Madeline had made their way to an area with cell service and reported Floyd missing to the National Park Service around 3 p.m. that afternoon. The National Weather Service issued an excessive heat warning in effect through that Wednesday of their backpacking trip. Temperatures on Monday, which would have been day four of their trip, reached up to 97 degrees, but was more likely around 110 degrees in the area where he had disappeared. So that's a problem. Yeah. When you get into excessive heat, you're carrying a pack, Mm -hmm. water, water, water you need. And, you you know, if you're not near water, wherever he ended up, um, you can get heat exhaustion. And you can hallucinate, can't you? I mean, being so dehydrated. Yeah, I've gotten heat exhaustion and I started to feel faint. I was kind of mumbling, not making sense. And you can make some very poor decisions at that point. And even thinking, you know, if you're so dizzy and, you know, dehydrated, you could even fall and fall, hurt yourself. Stumble. And, yeah, and, that's and scary. And they're on, you know, they could be on trails on the edge of the canyon. Mm-hmm. So Ned contacted Heidi, his wife, and stated, I am very worried. Everything was going perfectly until we split, split up. Floyd had two gallons of water a week's worth of food, and a map created by Ned of their planned route. The map also included information about the terrain, you know, so probably a topo map up and down in hills and things. Madeline and Ned remained on the canyon's rim trying to help in any way they could. Helicopters scouted the area all afternoon, and they couldn't find him. When Floyd disappeared, he was wearing a red long sleeve shirt, blue jeans, multicolored mesh Nike sneakers, a large blue low alpine contour backpack, and white rimmed sunglasses with orange lenses. He was also carrying a day pack. Yeah, those sunglasses, there's a photo of him, and he looks about 25 in in the photo that they're showing, wearing a red shirt. And then... um, Another photo, you can see his gray hair, and he still doesn't look 52 to me. He looks... Yeah, and I was going to say, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the picture we have up, but in the picture on the right, he looks fairly young, you know? I don't know if it's the sunglasses with the white rims and the orange, but yeah, Yeah. he definitely looks younger. Yeah. Now, Floyd had not been hiking for a few years, but he is still considered an experienced hiker. He's 5 feet, 11 inches tall, and he weighs around 170 pounds. He has brown slash gray hair and he also has brown eyes and we don't believe he has any piercings or tattoos um, from the pictures we have we couldn't really see any in there so none that we know of you know tom burnett floyd's neighbor was interviewed by news agencies when floyd went missing and they had been neighbors for more than five years 
And here's a little audio of Tom talking about the type of guy Floyd was. It has been a, a wonderful neighbor to have. Um, he's a very generous person, and uh, he's um, very caring and, uh, and just, just a great guy. Tom said Floyd had visited the Grand Canyon before and loved being outdoors. He also verified that Floyd had experience hiking and had knowledge of the area. Floyd had a map of the Grand Canyon hanging inside of his house. So he really loved the Grand Canyon. Yeah, and hiking, just being outdoors in general. Now, Tom said he calls Floyd Pink Floyd because his house is pink, a block from the (laughs) lagoon and about three blocks from the beach. It's in Treasure Island, Florida, and Floyd had lived right by the beach for years. He loved the beach and the weather in the Sunshine State, located on the Gulf of Mexico side of Florida near Tampa, and it's about 300 miles northeast of Miami, and its uh, highest temperatures in Treasure Island gets to be about 90 degrees, with lows being around 55 degrees. So he was used to the heat a little bit, yeah. 90, but not the excessive heat that they were having right. in the Grand Plus Canyon. Plus without and water and food and all that. Yeah, and since it only gets down to 55, he doesn't really experience cold. Cold, but it might get cold in the canyon at night, yeah, too. Yeah, possibly. And on Google Maps, if you look at his house on 126th Avenue, it is a cute little small pink house. It looks kind of single, like a single wide. Yeah, very small. But, but, uh, but right near the beach and the lagoon, it just looks like a great area to live. On June 21st, 2016, now this is Tuesday, and he went missing on Friday, searchers brought in a dog that was trained to look for missing persons. Searchers also headed down a trail where they spotted what could have been footprints. The area was still under extreme heat advisories with temperatures soaring now into the 120 degree mark in some areas. Multiple teams of park rangers set up a base camp near Kelly Tanks with shelter, water, and other resources for the benefit of the search teams, whose safety remained a priority. We are not going to risk the safety of our rescue crews in the heat. And that was according to Public Information Officer Emily Davis. Transportation to the area takes several hours and has made rescue operations and communications a challenge. So just getting people there was difficult. Yeah, to I bet. Search. 120 degrees, could you imagine? It's, that's, it, that's beyond. Every degree over 100 just probably seems hor- horribly, yeah. horribly Oh my gosh. Now back at home, friends anxiously waited for good news. Heartbreaking, absolutely, Tom, who is Floyd's neighbor, had told ABC Action News, I have thought of little else. We, of course, are still hoping for the best, hoping authorities are able to find him. Tom was optimistic at this point. He's a very, very intelligent man, he said, so we are hoping that may help him, and I would think he would have good survival-type skills. You know, again, working for NASA, you know, you calculate where you are, what kind of trouble you're in, uh, you know, don't panic. Uh, You know, it seems like he, with the experience he had in the canyon, it was very odd that he would get off track. Searchers from Grand Canyon, Paris, Chant National Monument, and Mojave County were helping the Grand Canyon National Park search and rescue team, along with Coconino County Search and Rescue. So they had quite a few teams out there. The search area covered over 10 square miles in an extremely remote and rugged area. Search and rescue included aerial support from Mesa Verde, Hell Attack crew, and aircraft. So they pretty much brought in everything they could. Yeah, in a 10-mile you know, radius. You, you can pack that far, but he's in rugged terrain. So yeah. that's, you know, that's kind of far to go. Yeah. And of course, we would hope he'd head south towards the Colorado River. That was potential trails that way. Right. So now it's Tuesday, June 21st. Temperatures in the Grand Canyon were reported to be about 92 degrees, and now Ned had told his wife there was about 15 people, including rangers and experienced hikers, who were searching for Floyd. Yeah, and earlier we had said there was quite a few crews out there searching, but, you know, 15 people, maybe that was all they allotted in that severe weather and severe 
terrain. Yeah, you know, they, they did say they... Or they d- took turns, 15 and then another 15. So. Yeah, because I was thinking about the heat being 120, but this Tuesday it was only about 90 degrees out, so... Yeah, it's still pretty little... warm. It can be get pretty warm. Yeah. Now, Heidi, which is uh, Ned's wife, had said, all I can do is wait for the call. She last heard from her husband 17 hours ago, and this was Tuesday around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She said it wouldn't make sense for him to take the hour drive from the command center to get cell service just to tell her there's no news. She's holding out hope and good news will come. She's holding out that good news will come, yes. And then on Thursday that uh, their responding resources include seven ground teams and National Park Service helicopters still. The area the team search is rugged and in thick brush. Transportation to the area is takes several hours and safety of the search team did remain a priority. So they're still going on Thursday searching. The base camp had been set up near Kelly Tanks with shade, shelters, water, and other resources for the search team. So they're really looking out for their people. Yeah, which is nice to see. I mean, you don't want more people to go missing right. or get that hurt. Right, that was what the public information officer said. We're not going to subject our searchers to that severe weather. According to Amala Posey, a spokeswoman for the park, she had stated that the search is being reduced now that Floyd had been missing for six days. So only six days in, they they started to kind of scale Seems back. Soon. Yeah, definitely. Especially when, since he was going to be out for nine days, and he probably had a water filter. And yeah. Geez, I didn't even think of that. Uh, She said, we're going into limited but continuous search mode. Some of the rescuers will be extracted. There are a few clues about where Floyd may be. While there were footprints to follow at one point, rescuers could not confirm that they belonged to Floyd. Flyers with Floyd's pictures and description were posted at various South Rim locations and in the search area at Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Yeah, Parashant, I okay. believe, is correct. Now, July 20th, 2016, a month later, on Wednesday morning, dozens of students and faculty at Middleton High School in Tampa gathered in the courtyard to honor Floyd. There's still no sign of him. The students haven't given up hope. Absolutely not. We're still praying for a miracle. We're still hopeful and we're still praying every single day. We're hoping for his return and hoping for him to come back. And this was Max Mitchell, a student, a junior student uh, at the high school reporting. The students also planted a tree in the courtyard in honor of their teacher so that we can honor the legacy that Mr. Roberts left and to remember what he did for our school and to just never let that flame go down. Parents, school teachers, and students all agree Mr. Roberts is a fantastic teacher and is truly missed. He was someone who was passionate about students and passionate about kids thinking for themselves and kids having their own independence. And that's what he woke up for every single day, showing up for school. And that was according to Max again. And that's really special. I mean, planting a tree and just remembering him. And they're still hopeful he was coming back a month later. Yeah. And, and you know, that students can go through a lot of emotional ups and downs. They probably had counselors, counselors available and stuff mm-hmm. when a teacher goes missing. It's very heartbreaking because yeah. they get close to their teachers. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, November, you know, kind of near November, December of 2016, so it's about six months later now, It seems his family had been taking care of his pink home in Treasure Island, Florida. His Pinellas County real estate taxes were paid on November 17th of 2016. A new roof was also installed on his home in December, and there was a note of commencement that was signed by his father. So that's nice of his dad to take care of the house. Mm Mm-hmm and pay the taxes and put a new roof on in hopes, I'm sure, that his son comes home. You know, there's no comprehensive roster of the persons that go missing in the national park system. Individual parks keep the original search and rescue reports. You know, we've talked about Dave Pilates and Missing 411 books. He's written several of them. He's a retired police officer, and he criticizes the Park Service for not making the comprehensive list of missing persons available to the public. He, he's quoted as saying you can go into any police department in the United States and within an hour the police chief would lay down a list. 
but the Park Service will not release anything comprehensive. And he's fought to get some reports released for just the books and, and information he's trying to gather. Right. And even Heidi Streetman, who is an assistant professor at Denver Community College, agrees with Dave Pilates about the need for openness. She collected more than 10,000 signatures on a petition requesting a national database of persons missing on federal lands. You know, and why aren't they reporting these people missing on federal lands available to the public? One thought is that they want people to visit the national parks and they don't want to scare people by telling them the amount of people that go missing. But it also might bring awareness. Like, I it certainly mean, would bring awareness. And you would want to always say, now I'm going to hike with somebody. Exactly, yeah, and not separate do, not or, you solo. know. You're yeah. going to have proper GPS equipment, mm-hmm. you, you know, tracking equipment. And did did Floyd have a GPS on him that, you know, would go off and they could find it? Because they did bring in the helicopters. Right. I'm wondering if they had that thermal, you know, infrared mm-hmm. sensing where they can sense body heat. Body heat. Mm-hmm. Although, is it good in heat? You know, is it, if it's 120 True, degrees yeah. out, does it not register with human heat? And then you'd have to fly at night and you don't want to fly a helicopter in the canyon at night. Yeah. that's that would be dangerous. I just thought it was a little odd that they stopped the search only six days in. It seems a little soon, especially when he was supplied with two gallons of water. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he had a water filter system, food for nine days. Yeah. I'm sure he was carrying his own food. And, you know, he could have survived out there somehow if he'd gotten into a little cavern or something and cooled down. You know, the only concern is heat exhaustion and you start making poor decisions. Yeah, hallucinating, and, dehydration, and, yeah. And, and you, you've you got that rough terrain where, it, you know, you, did he fall into some brush? Did he fall off, off into a crevice? And he I just, mean, you could imagine if, like, you fell and broke your leg out there. Yes. And you'd pretty much just be stranded out there, you know. Right, and if they didn't see him or he went unconscious. Now, he was wearing a red shirt. To me, that's pretty smart. I mean, that's very noticeable. Mm-hmm. But, um, again, you know, what happened to Floyd? So if anyone has any information about Floyd Roberts, you can always call the National Park Service at 928 928- Six three eight seven three zero zero. And again, if anyone does go packing in the Kelly Tanks area, to be aware that he hasn't been found and some of his gear and clothing he was wearing. You know, always be on the lookout when yeah. you're hiking. You can always follow us on Instagram. Check out some pictures on there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know we'll have maps and pictures of him on there, so you can definitely kind of get to see what he looks like. But um, you can always email us at mysteriouslymissing411 at gmail.com. But we just wanted to bring awareness to this case. I mean, there's not much information on it, and it's just so and yet, sad. Yeah, there's there's not even a missing Facebook poster for him, or a Facebook page for him. Yeah. And also uh, it, not a NamUs or Charlie project. So it just, you know, it's it's with the National Park Service, and... And they haven't found him. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. 